I've already had the preliminary video made on the F14 before the dev stream dropped. Now that I've extensively abused the plane in the dev server, and I have a good idea what it can do and what it could potentially be like in the live server. Of course, I'll also make an implemented video about how it is on the live server, but for now we'll talk about how it currently is on the dev server and what could possibly happen in the future updates with the addition of the F14A in its, quote, early configuration. The F-14A Early is a BR-11.3 Rank 7 fighter that tops off the U.S. naval line. Placed after the F-4J Phantom II, the F-14A represents the top tier of the U.S. aircraft tree. It's armed with the M-61 20mm rotary cannon 676 rounds for its main gun, the AIM-9D, AIM-9G, and AIM-9H as its FOX-2 missiles, the AIM-7E and AIM-7F as its FOX-1s, and and as a new feature for this update, the AIM-54 missile representing the first FOX-3 missile in War Thunder. It also contains a suite of bombs and Zuni rockets as ground ordnance. It has all the bells and whistles, including the AN-ALR-45 RWR, and I have to emphasize this next part, technically the first airborne radar in War Thunder with track plus scan capability, the AN-AWG-9 radar. The AIM-9H in the dev server is still incomplete. As it stands, it's currently an AIM-9G copy-paste with a higher track rate of 20 degrees per second instead of 12 degrees per second on the 9G. What we should expect is that it is more maneuverable than the 9G thanks to the new actuators, a shorter spool-up time and a longer track time owing to the new nitrogen-cooled lead sulfide detector with solid-state electronics, first of the rear aspect sidewinders and second in War Thunder Sidewinders after the AIM-9L. In War Thunder, the high track rate of the missile should allow it to keep tracking the intended target better in most conditions including side-on shots. The AIM-9H was the last variant to see service in the Vietnam War, and while used in low numbers, the 9H achieved the highest kill rate than any other variant in the Vietnam War and would eventually form the basis of the AIM-9L Sidewinder. In my original how to implement video on the F-14, I did suggest that the AIM-9H be added a stock missile for the F-14s. In this case, it's a tier 3 missile, but I'm not complaining. The AIM-9D and AIM-9G gets the job done at this BR, and I made that video completely on the assumption that War Thunder would add the F-16 and MiG-29 first, and that by the time the F-14 was added, stuff like the Tornado and MiG-29 would have already been added. So at this rate, the AIM-9H is completely reasonable. Now we move on to the AIM-54A. The AIM-54A in the dev server is the exact definition of trading range for capability. It has a maximum G load of 16G but a total burn time of 27 seconds. It requires a radar lock before launch but it does not need to maintain radar lock to keep light. However, if the launch platform loses radar lock before the active radar seeker activates, the missile will maneuver to the last known position of the target and it will follow the first target the radar locks onto. It may or may not be the original target, but it will track it nevertheless. It has a launch range of 150 kilometers, granting it a 50% increase in launch range over the AIM-7F Sparrow. The AIM-54 flies at a maximum of Mach 4.3 in-game, and a total missile guidance time of 300 seconds, the longest for any missile in-game. Now, while the max speed and range look like crazy high figures, it's best to know that these are only achieved at service ceiling altitudes, something thereabouts of 35,000 feet or 12,000 meters altitude. At realistic War Thunder engagement ranges of 18,000 feet or 6,000 meters, that range and speed get slashed to half while 75 kilometers is just 25% less than the 7F's maximum range, that halves the capability of the A-54 coupled with the lower speed it needs to maneuver against targets. I guess the A-54 would really struggle to keep up with DF Sky Flashes or R-24s in knife fight engagements. On top of this, Gaijin has greatly exaggerated notch angles for the ANAWG-9 which I will discuss later. So while the A-54B and C that are in the dev files are not here yet, taking the A-54A at face value, the verdict is that I don't think it's going to be the mythical missile that people are hoping it to be, but that doesn't mean I'm not taking four of them every time I soar. 
Another new thing the F-14A brings into the game is its radar, the ANAWG-9 radar. It has 7 modes, Center Search Mode, Center Track Mode, Pulse Doppler Search Mode, Pulse Doppler Track Mode, Pulse Doppler Vertical Search Mode, Pulse Doppler Vertical Track Mode, and Track Wall Scan. The first 4 modes need no explanation as they're basically in-game already with the Pulse Doppler radars that we currently have. PD Vertical Radar uses vertical scanning and tracking and the speed gate instead of ranging. And what we want to get at is the track wall scan feature. Track wall scan exists in between the realm of scanning and tracking. Like it's a jack of all trades but a master of none. It will give information to the pilot about the range of the scanned aircraft but it does it periodically and cannot be the basis for A54 locks. You can pick and choose which among the scan targets are to be tracked, and while the AWG-9 can choose up to 6 targets to track, this is not a possible feature in game. From my experience using TWS when the game doesn't crash, the AWG-9 can only pick one aircraft to track, which eliminates any effective ripple firing of Fox 3s, which I guess is good for balance, though to what extent I'm not sure as track quality heavily degrades when the AWG-9 is tracking all 6 selected targets. It's also important to note that each target on the TWS screen can individually notch the radar, so they can very well disappear once they achieve the notch angle required. The track or scan mode is also heavily dependent on the mechanical swing of the radar dish, so you can see a lag between the track box and the actual location of the aircraft in track or scan. My opinion, the ANAWG-9 is an extremely capable radar, and it's going to be well complemented by the AIM-54B and AIM-54C should they choose to add it in-game. The F-14A is powered by the Pratt & Whitney TF-30 P-412A in the game. The engine outputs 92.97 kN of thrust and can take the F-14A to Mach 2 even on its heaviest possible loadout of a full rack of 500 pound bombs or 6 AIM-54s and 2 Sidewinders. The engines provide a reasonable amount of thrust to weight for the F-14 but certainly nowhere in the F-5E or MiG-21 BIS territory. The highest altitude I've taken the F-14 to is about 14,000 meters before the plane started stalling. With the wings outstretched, the F-14A can turn better than the MLD at higher speeds, around 700 kilometers per hour. With the wings folded, it can reach a top speed of 1480 kilometers per hour at low altitude, around the same ballpark as the MLD. Of course, I won't emphasize on these as the flight models are subject to continuous change, but as it stands on the dev server, the F-14A can perform on par with the MiG-23 MLD in dogfights, except in very low speed dogfighting where the MLD excels at. The F-14 can keep up in dogfights at higher speeds but is beaten by the MLD in low speed turn fighting. I'll probably emphasize on this better when the live server drops on my implemented video. In my pre-dev stream video about the F-14, I said that USSR should at least get the MiG-29 with R-27 and R-60Ms to counter the F-14. But when I played the F-14 in the dev server, this completely changed my opinion. It has no all-aspect IR missiles, it has the AIM-7 FSRH, and the AIM-54A as ARH. On top of that, it only has 60 flares and chaff. The MiG-23 MLD can compete with the F-14A early as it is now as the R-24 is a very good missile. The R-27 on the MiG-29 would completely shit on other nations that aren't the USA. It's important to view Air RB as not just US versus USSR but a mishmash of nat nations per team. Sure the F-14 will dominate the first month of the update, but when the spam dies out and you get MiG-29s fighting people still riding up to the F-14A or god forbid the F-104S ASA with an RWR stuck at 12 o'clock. And mind you, this is at 11.3 well within the range of the G-35D with no flares in RWR. Throwing the MiG-29 in the mix with the 11.3 matchmaker will just complicate everything. I see the logic of Gaijin right now. Worry one plane instead of worrying about two to four planes in one go. Let's start worrying about more than one aircraft, probably in the next coming updates. Well, Gaijin seems to have laid the groundwork for active radar homing missiles. Which makes missiles like the AMRAM R-77, Derby, AEM-4, Mica em and the Meteor possible in the coming years. 
With growing engagement ranges and growing missile ranges, we're gonna see an increase in EC map sizes and with Gaijin confirming dropped tanks in the dev Q&A, this might be the direction Gaijin is headed. In the data mines, there also seems to be a new guidance parameter added to the AIM-54 which is labeled data link. That's something to, to look out for. So what tangible aircraft am I looking to be added next? I gotta be honest, at this point, I don't know. I just threw out my timetable, so I'd certainly like to believe that the anniversary update is still the F-16 and MiG-29, but the September update is one to look out for with what this update brought to the table. Hell, I believe this update, I thought we'd expand on Gen 3s with AIM-9Ls, but it seems we're going a different way and that's fine. I love the F-14, and while this update is clearly an unofficial homage to Top Gun Maverick, I actually enjoy it and can't wait to play the F-14 on the live server. Though the idea of where aircraft like the SC-24, SC-25, and MiG-25 are in the wake of the sleep and capability is enticing, but I'm sure Gaijin is saying, saving it for a rainy day. So if I'm allowed to hope, I hope the A6 intruder in the files gets added as well. Considering Gaijin only added 3 aircraft in this update, the F-14, yet another SU-17, and the Dassault Milan. I'm primarily an Air RB player, so the thought of only 3 aircraft being added is a bit disappointing to me. But at least it gives me more time to grind out the ZTZ-99A, another vehicle I'm looking out for. And oh god, what have they done in the forums again with the ZTZ-99A? I swear, it feels like all Gaijin needs to do is just put out inaccurate models and some dude will just post classified information on the forums. But, you know, it's always that. It's always someone. Anyways, with this update being relatively small, one can assume we're getting nothing but huge updates from here until Christmas. Certainly, this update was just fan service for those asking for it, and it's not a stretch of the imagination to say that an F-14 premium is coming in the works when Tier 8 becomes a thing. I'm sorry for the nations that didn't get a new play in this update, but it seems Gaijin banked this entire update on the F-14. We'll see the next round of dev servers, especially with the addition of the BLU-27B and Mark 77 Mod 2 and Mod 4 incendiary bombs being added into the files. As always, thanks for watching. This is the Dr. MD. Godspeed.